Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here and in this video we're going to see how to set up Samba server as a Docker container. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So if you're here, you're already familiar with Samba itself and you're looking forward to seeing how to set it up as a Docker container in no time. So as you might already know, Samba server is a file server that is using SMB protocol and ultimately the thing that we want from this will be providing file storage for people and making them be able to store files privately for themselves and also share with other users that might or might not have access to those specific files. So as you can see, I'm in the GitHub repository for the server containers slash Samba. And right over here, we've got a Docker Compose file. So I've grabbed this Docker Compose file and made it a little simpler. And we're going to see that shortly. So right before we jump to the Docker Compose file, over here, I've got a schematic that shows what we're going to deploy as a docker container for our samba server so as you can see we've got a samba server that has multiple shares over here and we've got multiple users with different access levels so like for example we've got two shares for user alice one specifically for bob and two public shares one being read only that is shared between those two users and lastly the guest share that is also accessible by guest users so the users that are not authenticated and not logged in we call them guest users so like for example in a company in an office we want to share some files with people that randomly comes in and go out or any other use cases that we don't really want user authentication so the difference between the public and the guest share is that the public share will require users to be authenticated but the guest share will be also shared with the users that are not even logged in so with having this in mind i'm going to move to the terminal where i've got my docker compose file if i hit ls you can see that i've got my docker compose file with the shares directory so if i go ahead and nano the docker compose file you can see that i'm using the exact same docker image with the network mode set to host so as a result any port that is exposed in this container will be also exposed in the host network and will be available and accessible by other users in the same network. So if I move a little bit down right over here, you can see that by passing these environment variables, I am able to define my users with their passwords and their user IDs with their group names. So apparently any environment variable with the prefix of account on the line following with a name will enable us to define usernames. Also the same pattern goes for defining user IDs and the users groups. So next if I move a little bit more down you can see that i am defining the shares that will be exposed from this samba server so for defining shares we use the prefix samba volume config following with a meaningful name to ourselves to eventually be able to distinguish between these shares so like for example i've got the alice only share so i have named the share alice share and defined the path inside the container and I've defined the valid users as Alice so only the Alice user will be able to use this share over here I'm banning the guest users from accessing this share and over here by passing the read-only attribute I'm switching between read-only and writable shares so as the last attribute i'm passing the browsable to yes so as a result this share will be shown in the samba server by the users so next over here i'm defining another share for ls user with exact same attributes but the thing that will be different is that 
the browsable attribute for this share is set to no so no users will be able to even see this share in the samba server next i've got another share for pub user and over here i'm defining the two public shares one being read only and the other will be writable and as the last share i've got the guest share in which i've set the guest okay to yes so even the guest users will be able to also use this share so as the last configuration in this docker compose file i've got the volume section in which i'm mounting the host paths to the relevant paths inside the container like for example for the alice share that will be using the slash shares slash alice inside the container i am mounting it to the dot slash shares directory that will be right next to the docker compose file and slash alice inside that directory and also doing the same thing for other shares and over here we've got the mount point for avahi service or maybe i'm just pronouncing it wrong so apparently this is a service that will make other services appear in the network level by other computers so i'll hit ctrl x to exit out of the nano and if i hit ls shares directory you can see that i've got all the directories that i defined in the docker compose file created right over here so if i hit ls la shares directory in order to see the permissions and owners of these directories as you can see for the bob directory i've set the owner and the group to 1001 and that is because in the docker compose file as I'm defining the Bob user, you can see that I am setting the user ID for the Bob user to exact same number. So as a result, that directory will be owned by this user ID, which is exactly the Bob user. So as a result, Bob user will be able to read and write and own all the files inside that directory. So I'll hit Control X and if I hit Docker Compose op D, you can see that my Samba container is created without any network and the reason for that is that I've configured the container to use the host network. So if I hit docker compose ps I can see that my container is up and running and also if I hit docker compose logs dash f to follow and dash dash tail 100 to grab the latest 100 lines so we can see that the container is up and outputting the relevant logs to the std out of the container so i'll hit ctrl c to stop the logs so in order for me to be able to mount the smb share from linux i am required to install the cifs utils package and in ubuntu i am able to do that by using sudo apt install cifs utils so it might be different in different distros and as far as i know this is not required in windows machines so because i have this package already installed i'll hit ctrl c so next in order to connect to the samba server i'm going to the files explorer right over here i'll try to first define the protocol so i'll hit smb colon slash slash and next i'll try to pass the ip address or the dns name or fully qualified domain name of the server that i'm running the samba server on so i'll hit the address and hit the connect button over here so you can see all the shares that are exposed from this samba server except for the alice hidden share that we set the browsable attribute to no so i'll try to connect to the public share it is asking for username and password if i do not provide any and try to connect as anonymous user which is exactly the same thing that we called guest user so i'll try to connect and you can see that it is not possible so i'll try to connect using the alice user i'll hit connect and you can see that using alice user i am able to see through the files that already exist right over here or even try to write some new files and directories and things that i want to put on this share 
So I'll provide YT as the directory name and you can see that I can create new directories. So I'll try to connect to the Samba server again and this time try to connect to the Bob's share but using Alice credentials. So I'll hit connect and you can see that I am not able to authenticate with Alice user in order to see the Bob's share. So I'll hit cancel and try to connect to the Alice share also using the Alice credentials and also you can see that I am able to log in to this share and and see through the older files and even try to create new files and directories. So lastly I'll try to connect to the Alice hidden share and I'll try to define after defining my Samba server's address and I'll try to grab that from the docker compose file over here. I'll try to copy that and paste right over here. I'll try to connect and you can see that by using the Alice credentials that I stored its credentials, I am able to also log in to this share even it is not browsable and not shown in the Samba server. So that's all for this video. I hope you learned something new in this one. If you have any questions, any recommendations, of course, go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below. And honestly, this is the easiest way for me to spin up a Samba server. And by using this very simple and straightforward syntax, I am able to define my users and shares and access policies for those users to those shares. So of course you can find other containers or even coming out of container world you can set up Samba servers directly on the operating system. So for me this is the easiest and most reasonable way to spin up this service. So lastly if you found the video useful don't forget to like and subscribe which will help grow the channel and motivate me to create more free contents like this and with that I hope to see you in the next videos.